Today we're going to take a look at the TINA TI circuit simulation program. This is a free version of the TINA software that's available on the Texas Instruments website. And this is what we see when we open it up. Here we have a large area uh, in which we're going to build our schematics. And uh, across the top here we have the typical range of menus, file menu, for uh, opening and saving projects. We have an edit menu for the various items, insert menu, uh, view for the various items. We'll go through all of these, the analysis menus. TNM is test and measurement. These are virtual uh, meters and so forth, oscilloscopes, things like that. Um, various tools, specialties for the Texas Instruments and a help file. Uh, so the first thing we see over here <clears throat> of import is this strip. There's a series of these. This is the basic components strip. So we have a ground, a battery, function generator, things like this, resistors, capacitors, inductors, um, another strip for switches, uh, metering devices, you know, voltmeter, ammeter, things like that, various kinds of sources, semiconductors, diodes, transistors, FETs, uh, spice macros for larger things, you know, operational amplifiers, devices like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to build up a little circuit today, do some basic uh, DC analysis on it, see how that works. In a subsequent video, we'll look at uh, AC analysis, right, how to do uh, transient analysis, things of that nature. So the first thing I like to do here is, uh, for a small circuit anyway, I'm going to come into the zoom and set this up to 200. And I'm going to start collecting some components here. There's a couple ways you can approach this. You could uh, grab the individual components, set them up, change their values to what you need, and then wire everything. What I like to do is just grab all my components, uh, put them in roughly the place I would like them to be. So I'm going to grab a power supply and a handful of resistors. Uh, then I'm going to wire everything up and go back and change the uh, individual values for all my components. All right, so here's what I have. Now, I need to change the orientation of some of these components. So what you can do is just click on a component like this. Um, you can go up into the uh, menu area here to rotate these. Um, or you could just remember what the uh, keyboard shortcuts are, in which case we have a control R which will rotate this right clockwise, in other words. And uh, Control L will do a left or counterclockwise. You can also select multiple items. So in this case, I'm going to flip both of these. So I can select this, hold down the Control key, select the next one. Notice how that one also lights up. Do a Control R, and they both change. Now, you might not like the fact that the um, label here has has changed its orientation. So you can just click on just the label and rotate that if you're so inclined. Okay, so I click on the whole thing. Um, I can just click on the label. All right. Um, now what I'm going to do is essentially make a little series parallel connection over here. So I'm going to take uh, these resistors. If I double click on it, I get a little property page here. I can start changing things. So I'm going to turn this into a 2.2K ohm resistor. Click OK. I'm going to turn this one into a 3.9K resistor. By the way, when you are going through these components, there are some nice shortcuts. For example, um, this button right here will just do last component. So if you're blasting down a bunch of resistors like I just did, you could just click this, or you could do a right mouse button, which is a property page. And this is one way of opening up the, the values. Uh, but you can also do the rotate left, rotate right, mirror image the thing. Um, you can even edit the symbol if you want. But uh, you can get last component, which will just give you another one of those things. In any case, I'm just going to double click over here. Change this one to a 5.6K. All right, now I've got everybody uh, roughly where I want. Okay, now to wire, 
you notice that these have little sort of flags on, on the end, these little red sort of X's. And when I get on them, this turns into an auto wire, a little sort of uh, stylus pen sort of thing. So we can just go from one to the other. Now I just click on that and notice we get the little crosshairs, bring that up to where I want, click on it again, that makes the connection. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here, bring this across, click, 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 bring it across to here, bring it down. So you can see basically how this works. All right, so I just, and here I have a node that's drawn. There's a place where current can split. And finally, I'm going to bring this down. Oops, went a little too far. Bring that over there. Okay, so here's my completed circuit, all right? Now, we could uh, move some of these components around if we are so inclined. It'll do a little bit of rewiring for us. So you can kind of prettify this, if you will. Um, I'm going to change my power supply while I'm at it. Let's change this to 20 volts. Now, besides changing the values, you can also change the names. So um, maybe I don't want to call this V1. Right? Maybe I want to call this uh, E source. okay? So that just looks a little nicer to me. You can do what you want, customize the way this thing looks. The important thing, obviously, at this point is once we've got this built, uh, we would like to do a simulation, find voltages and so forth. Uh, the, the most straightforward thing you can do here is come up to the analysis menu. We're going to do DC in this video. Calculate nodal voltages. Um, now, you saw a little window pop open here. That was the ERC, the Electronic Rules Check, which you can do separately. And it'll basically inform you if there's any errors. If a component has been left open, for example, uh, if a wire is unconnected. In this case, nothing happened. So here's my output. Um, now, I've got a little probe. So I can put that on a, a node connection, and it'll tell me what the voltage is. So that says, hey, that's 9.38 volts from here to ground. All right. Uh, the obvious question is, well, um, you know, what about a place like here? Okay, I can click here and nothing happens. Well, I'd ha I have to have a node, all right? So there's different ways you can approach this. Now, the, the, um, I think the nicest way of doing this is instead of just grabbing this calculate node voltages, just get the table. This will basically get everything for you in one shot. Now, you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, various nodes have been numbered for you. Ground typically is zero, and then we have these other connections, node two, three, one, four, and so forth. So I have this big list. This basically gives me everything. We can uh, reduce the number of things I uh, want, but in this case, I would like to see them all. So you know, what the heck, we'll check them all. So you can see everything that's going on here. VP1 would be the uh, voltage at point number one, right? We see that's 20 volts, that's our source. And then VP4, for example, would be the voltage from this junction to ground, 16.68 volts. Uh, we also have currents going through various components. So the current going through resistor one, in other words, connected from uh, node number one to node number four, we can see that's 3.22 milliamps. Um, we can see Voltages across individual components, for example, here's VR2, which is connected from node 4 to node 2. So VR2, we can see is 7.3 volts, right? You got everything that works out uh, very nice. Now, there are certain things that you don't see. For example, what if I wanted to find the voltage from this point to this point, right? That doesn't show up. I mean, we can do it easily enough knowing what this voltage is, knowing what this voltage is, we could do a little calculation, but it might be nice to just have it tell us immediately, right? Um, there's a couple ways we can approach this. One nice way, uh, one thing I like to do here is to um, come over to the meters select tab and we have these little uh, voltage pins. We can stick these on as measurement points. So I'm just gonna stick that on there, right? Let me grab another one, stick that over here. Now, I'm going to go a little crazy here and just stick them all over the place. Every, every place I might be interested, I'm going to put one of those little connectors. We can rotate those, uh, by the way, if we want to. But I'm going to give them different names. So um, I don't want to call that VF3. You know, I, I very often like to give a letter 
name to a node or a connection point. So I'll just call that point A. I'll call this one point B. Call this one point. Oop. Hit the wire. Point C. And lastly. Oops, accidentally hit that guy. Call this one point D. And when things get tight, sometimes, um, you know, things, um, you accidentally hit something. So, you know, you, you can move things around, right? So, like I said, I can take these things and move them around a little bit, um, you know, rotate it. I just did a control R on that, right? Just maybe I don't like that sort of orientation. That's entirely up to you, right? Those are just fully um, subjective kinds of things, aesthetics. But in any case, I have my uh, uh, connection points labeled A, B, C, D. So now it's easy for me to think in terms of a voltage from B to B to D or B to A or, you know, whatever the heck it is. I can just say it's V, B, D. All right. Um, now, if I go back and do the uh, analysis here, my DC analysis, what we're going to see very nicely Here's my nodes A, B, C, D. Those are the voltages at those nodes with respect to ground. Okay. And by the way, if you click on one of these things, you'll see how this turns red, right? So I just clicked on R3. So we can see the voltage of R3. We can see the current through R3. Very convenient. Okay. All right. Um, this still doesn't get me V, B, D, for example. Easy enough to do a calculation, but if you really want to sort of drill down into it, we can grab a voltmeter, stick a voltmeter out here, and just connect the voltmeter to the appropriate points. All right, now let me do the same thing. So this is going from node B to D. This is VBD, basically. I could even rename this VBD if I wanted to. But I'll go back to my DC analysis you will see in here VM1, that's my uh, source there, that's 11.58 volts. You can even see here that's indicated as B to D, so that's VBD, right? All right, that's the way we can grab that. Um, there is a ammeter that's available, although since this does give you all of the currents, um, there's probably not a lot of reason to, to wire in a, an ammeter, but you can if you really want to. Uh, to remember, ammeters have to be wired in series rather than in parallel like voltmeters. But other than that, you know, it works just fine. Okay, so I get all my voltages on this one page. I can get all my currents, uh, set up differential voltages, things of interest. Right? Very convenient sort of setup there. There are some other cool little things you can do. Um, there is a text tool I rather like. So you can put in notes here, annotations. It's nice in that it has a, a feature for sort of built up fractions. You can do exponents or uh, superscripts. You can do, uh, have special characters, Greek characters. You can do um, a subscript or an index. So uh, this is going to kind of look a little goofy, but you'll see what we have. All right, so you can use this what you want change the font things like that okay well we don't need that anymore so i'll just get rid of it okay uh there is one other really nice thing i like out here um, you might find this of use go into the options you can f change this this by default here is set up for ANSI uh, USA style components, you might want to use European style, right? DIN style. So these are the symbols that we would use in that case. And another cool thing here, go back to USA, you can enable 3D shapes. And you can see what's happened, right? So our battery turns into literally a battery. We have a picture for a, a desktop uh, multimeter. And the resistors here are all uh, appropriate color codes. Okay, now all of these defaulted to five 
percent. So this resistor, this resistor, they all have gold uh, final bands here. But you could come in and change this. You know, you can change the, um, the tolerance on these things. You have various parameters that you can come in here and sort of monkey with. So we could say, oh, this is a 10% tolerance, right? Whenever you see this little ellipsis, you can click on that and get further information. So notice what happened. This resistor turned into a silver band because we s selected 10% on it. Um, so you could do it like this if you wanted to. It's a little clunky if you have a large circuit, but you know if you're just starting out and you're just starting to do some uh, you know breadboarding and so forth, this is kind of a nice visual to sort of reinforce uh, learning the color code, things like that. But we'll just go back and uh, disable that. You can also set up some other things, uh, color schemes, for example, whether you want the, the units in uh, traditional um, you know, inches versus uh, metric millimeters, things like that. All right. So that pretty much gives us a, an outlay, uh, an overview of, of how we're going to do our DC analysis here. All right. So we have our strip of components. Uh, grab what you need and lay them out, double click to change the values. Then you can, if desired, also change the names, the labels. You can add measurement points, these uh, little voltage points. Uh, you can use meters to get differential voltages. And of course, don't forget the, the sort of the biggie here is a table of DC results, which will give you all the currents and voltages coursing through and across the circuit. Right. Very convenient sort of one-stop shopping on that particular thing. All right. Um, last thing, if we were to look at uh, semiconductors, because you know, these are just straight passives, if we were to look at, uh, let's say, a transistor, I'll just throw a generic transistor out here, you could uh, double-click on this, and you notice this is an NPN transistor. There's the little ellipsis. I can click on that, and we have a huge array of various parts that we can grab. So for example, if you were looking at a little amplifier and you wanted a, a 2N3904, you could click on that. Here's all the parameters for that particular part number. Right, click OK. And uh, we'll now do a simulation with that specific part. Okay. So we could do that for uh, all these different semiconductors and, and so forth. And finally, uh, we can pull out a bill of materials. So this is all the components we have in the circuit. Tell us everything that we need. All right, so here's all of our resistors listed. There's the transistor, for example, our 3904. Um, all of these various parts. All right, so that's very convenient if you're going to uh, build something. But there you have it. All right, so uh, Tina TI available on the TI website for free. Certainly a worthy program.